Welcome back to another Lab Notes where we're going to dig into some of the 3D printing news that's out there. And I have a couple of stories that are kind of unbelievable. Why unbelievable? Well, how about 3D printing a new face? In 2021 in Somerset, England, a man by the name of Doug Richards, he and some friends were out bicycling when, unfortunately, they were hit by a drunk driver. Now, I'll spare you all the details, but he ended up losing the entire left side of his face. Fast forward to now, four years later, and after a lot of operations, he found himself at the Bristol 3D Medical Center. Well, what they did is they 3D scanned the whole right side of his face, then they modeled it to match the left, and they printed a facial prosthesis using a peak 3D printer by Mini Factory. Now, they don't say in the, any of the articles I could find on this what material they were using, but this Peak 3D printer uses, let's see, it prints at 250 degrees Celsius with Peak and PEC, so one of those is going to be what it's made of. Looking at the pictures with this new facial prosthesis, well, I can say it's not a perfect reconstruction, and you may think the same, but it's still really incredible how 3D printing and 3D scanning is helping people like this. And by the way, did you catch the part about the, uh, the Bristol 3D Medical Center? I think that's kind of amazing. They have a medical center just for 3D printing and scanning. 3D printing is definitely getting taken serious, and that's one of those things out there that shows it right there. So who knows? Maybe when all this tech trickles down to the home market, well, we could see a whole new way of 3D printing. Like maybe a 3D printer that's the size of a quarter. <laughs> that's what MIT and UT Austin, well, they just made this, and it's pretty wild. They've literally taken a 3D printer and made it so small that it fits on a coin. No motors, no moving parts. It just uses light. Now, what they're saying is that they've created the world's first chip-based 3D printer, and it uses little antennas to steer the laser beams into a gooey resin, and the light instantly hardens it into shapes. And you know what that means? It's UV and resin, and that's great. They've used it already to print the letters, obviously, MIT, and it only took a few seconds. But their goal, what they're aiming for, is full-on holographic 3D printing, you know, where you can cure and print a whole object all at one time. Now, obviously, this isn't going to output full-size 3D printed dragons or helmets or anything like that, but getting started is half the battle. Now, we all probably have heard different things where there have been tests on these types of holographic printers where they're trying to cure everything all at once and, um, you know, using that resin-like gel. But the capabilities of something like this on this scale and beyond, well, they're quite endless. And go back to that 3D Medical Center and you can kind of start imagining what I'm thinking. Now, of course, I'd rather have a larger 3D printer than small, and I wouldn't turn down the chance to have one the size of a quarter, but think about it. You thought your Bamboo A1 Mini had a small build plate. Well, for something closer and dearer to our own home 3D printing labs, I think it's safe to say we all know what an STL file is, and most likely we all know what a 3MF file is as well. And if you know those two, it's safe to say you're not only aware of the difference between the two of them, but also kind of sometimes the problems and pain of getting the wrong file type. Well, in case you didn't know, there's an international standards convention or whatever for probably anything that has to do with everything we use from technology and beyond. And this is no different. What they have done is um, they have created a new standard for 3D printing. So think about USB cables and how we've all had the pain and the problems of getting different 
cell phones and things like that, well, they're trying to fix this on 3D printers, and they've called it the ISO slash IEC 25422 <laughs> And what it says it's going to do is to improve how 3D printing data is structured and exchanged. But which file type one? Well, obviously 3MF, and that's the 3D manufacturing format. And I personally think this just makes sense. The STL file, well, it really just holds the geometry of a model, but 3MF, that gives you a whole lot more. And especially with color printing, we're seeing practically every 3D printing manufacturer out there come out with a new 3D color printing machine. So this really just does make sense. 3MF bundles, um, it's not gonna just hold the shape of your design like an STL, but it's also going to be things like materials, colors, textures, and all your print settings all in one file. So what they're saying is so nothing gets lost or messed up uh, between software and printer. Now, in case you're worried that this is just something that somebody out there is doing, this is actually backed by some pretty big names. Microsoft, HP, Autodesk, Fusion 360, uh, Dassault, Siemens, and Stratasys, and I believe there were a few others. And 3MF is going to remain open and royalty-free. Anyone can use it, no license fees. That's awesome. And so why are they doing this now? Well, the reason is they're looking to the future. We've already mentioned a few things about 3D printing that seems almost incredible to even think about, especially a few years ago, much less now. So 3D printing is expanding and growing, and we're seeing it in things like aerospace. We've seen 3D printers recently actually on the International Space Station, printing rockets, things like that. Uh, we've seen it in medicine, as we've talked about, consumer products, and uh, having a strong standard, well, that's a key to making all of those function better. And it's kind of like I've always talked about when I see these big things happening out there in different industries, the hope is that one day that'll trickle down to us in our home labs and we can enjoy that and get better prints as well. It's already, the 3MF is already a key in print-on-demand services, especially places like Maker World and the new Printables Easy Print Service. You haven't heard about the Printables Easy Print Service? Well, uh, Joseph Prusa recently put out an article about it. There's a link in the description if you want to read that. And basically what it allows you to do is you can slice on any device. It'll work on your phone, on your tablet, your laptop. No installation required. And you know what that means. It means it's web-based. It's also going, the way they do that with that web base is it's cloud-powered slicing. And it's going to use Prusa's servers for slicing. So even basic devices can handle big jobs. Wait a second. Servers, cloud-based, that sounds familiar. Anyway, alongside all of that, there's going to be some simple editing tools. They're going to be able to adjust placement, scale, rotate, duplicate, arrange, you know, all those standard things that you would kind of expect in a slicer. Uh, there will be the basic settings. You'll be able to change quality, infill, supports, perimeters, and even do some smart color painting. And it will continue to work with offline printers. You can download the G-code, use it with any printer, even not connected to the cloud. They're designing it to be beginner friendly and for first timers and students with either a Chrome or tablet based workflow is what they're saying there. Now Joseph Prusa does reiterate easy print is free, cloud slicing is optional, and the desktop Prusa slicer that we all know and love, well it's going to remain fully open source. And as everything that comes out, you know, there's going to be bugs here and there, but I look forward to some real competition, you know, for the other big players that are out there. Because competition, well, that's always good news for us. Well, that's it for this edition of Lab Notes. Have fun, keep 3D printing, and let's all continue to learn, create, and amaze.